Second for same as the first. Hello everyone, we sunk the Jet Gamer here and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. Last time, we had lunch with Lily and Hanako and it was very pleasant. And before that, we had to talk to Kenji. And we learned about his, uh, feminist infiltration conspiracy. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Anyways, when the final bell sounds, I realize that there is still a lot of time left in the day and... I'm left wondering what to do. It's odd at the hospital I had 24 hours a day of free time, but here filling the considerable shorter hours feels difficult. Everyone else leaves and I'm left alone with the teacher. <coughs> Mutao is examining the assignment sheets we were working on earlier, marking them with a red bulb pen. Raising his eyebrows from his papers briefly, he noticed me and furrows his brow. What is it, Akai? Don't mind him addressing me, but I guess it's natural to spark some conversation since there's no one else around. Um, nothing. Think about what I do after school. Teacher slowly puts the cap on his pen he is holding and arranges his papers into a stack, clacking it against the desk twice. He seems very methodical and for a brief moment I'm reminded of Shizune, but the teacher is more unhurried and relaxed. Much more routined. You have no plans? No, I consider joining a club. I don't know what kind of club would interest me. Go observe a meeting of someone else's uh, club. Might protect your interest. I guess. I just... I don't know how to continue from there. Rudo looks at me in a way that makes me quickly want to take the words back to avoid a conversation. But I can't, so I have to forge ahead. I just don't know how to deal with people. I mean, the other students. I'm talking to people and everything, so it's not that I'd be isolated or anything. I just don't know what to think about. The disabilities. It's like, it feels that I'm being impolite if I pay attention to them, and it's weird to ignore them. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. Teacher scratches his cheek absent-mindedly, looking, looking very unresponsive. These things are only an issue if you make them one. You can talk normally with someone, even if they are blind or something. Try to look behind the superficial. There's not a single student here who isn't just a normal kid behind whatever they might seem at first glance. This is the same thing Yuko did. I know they're right, but it's hard. How can you not consider, for example, Shizune's deafness, when the only way to communicate with her is to talk through Misha? Or Hanako? It's not like you can ignore her face. But... Okay, that actually got me! <laughs> I'm interrupted by the door of the classroom suddenly slamming open. Teacher! Oh god. Misha crashes in, a hand straight, uh, straight in it. Enthusiastic greeting. Her loud voice, her voice loud and lively enough to wake the dead from the graves. She saw towards the teacher's desk with a bouncy step, hands energetically swinging with the rhythm. Muto, visibly dismayed at the interruption, and Misha, in general, slumped in his chair. Mikado. Misha stops in her tracks and looks around cluelessly. As if she's sensing from his tone that something's wrong, but she has no idea what. Yes? We have talked about volume control before. I have the same problem. Yes. But she doesn't lower her voice at all, and the teacher just rubs his eyes. So what is it? I... we need help. We're running out of supplies for the festival stands. This is a distress! She wears a pink slip of paper she is holding around. So... Go get more supplies from the art room. What's the problem with that? Plywood! Plywood's the problem! Last time we wanted more, there was only a little, but that time we just took it all and went with that. Now there's like none left there. So, do you know where there is some? I don't understand. How would I know? She chan I mean, the president thought that a teacher would know if there's plywood. Was she wrong? Rutao looks like he's in great pain, frowning from his entire essence, and Misa doesn't get it at all. Wow! Looking at the two of them communicate is terrible. Like looking at a man being tortured by drilling his skull open while blasting pop music at full volume at the same time. <laughs> Jesus! I'm afraid I have no idea if there are any plywood in the school, let alone where it would be if there was any. Aww, what should I do? Perhaps try to find Mr. Nomia? I'm quite sure he would know where to find everything you need. You'd have to pry them from his cold dead hands, but that's a different matter. Ah, I don't have time. We're so busy. 
She holds her head with both of her hands, looking as despairing as if as is possible for a person like her. Without even noticing, she crumbles the note she's holding against her hair. I shouldn't even be fetching these things. There's so much to do and we're failing, falling behind the schedule. Muto looks at her gravely and then suddenly smiles. Smiling doesn't really fit his face. I think it'd be better if he didn't. I wonder if you could get some temporary help. He uh, switches staring at me focusedly with a hard expression as if to say, Go make some friends. <sighs> I guess I can give you a hand. You can? Thanks, Ichan. You really are nice. She pauses, doing a double take, and then points at me with a finger, saying, Ah! and looking very puzzled. Come to think of it, what's Ichan doing here? Class is over, and you should be having fun. Well, we just had, we just had a little chat. Oh no, it's not detention, is it? Are you in trouble, Hee-chan? No, I'm not. Is Hee-chan in trouble, Teacho? No, he's not. Uh <laughs> Muto sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to help Misha to get her off the teacher's back. So, what do you need? Here's a list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. She offers me the note she's holding. I take it, hesitating a bit. Said I help you, but this has no implications on whether I'm joining this council or not. Aww. Still, thanks, Hee-chan. Try to be quick. We are in a star building streak now. We must hurry, hurry, hurry! She bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. Well, there you have it, Akai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so smug. Looking at the list with a number of items ranging from paint to plywood, all written with small, neat handwriting that is undoubtedly Shizune's. I heave a head sigh. I'll be going then. Over the long list, limply at the teacher, I exit to the hallway. The classroom's closet to ours are designated belonging to classes 3, 1, and 3, 2 on the right side, and 3, 4 on the left side, each door looking exactly the same. Further down the corridor, still with identical doors, are rooms that I didn't think were used for classes. I guess the art room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It is a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept or not in use. Am I in the right place? Desks and chairs are all around the room, a thin layer of dust settled on them. There are some essels in the corner, so at least this looks like the right place. The room is flushed in sunlight from the big windows, shadows creeping all around the desks. Specks of dust are dancing in the stagnant air, making the beams of light look almost visible. Jokingly, I call into the empty room. Anybody ho Something catches my eye and I stop mid-sentence. Oh, hello! Sitting at a desk is a short-haired girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform, with a fork between her toes and a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. This odd way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands. But her presence here is what takes me back even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in the corner very still, but I still somehow took her as part of the furnishing or statue at first glance. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. The girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her huge eyes like a rabbit in headlights. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. Staring at her, her mouth wide open, something remembering I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird statement keeps us both stunned into silence. Punctuated only by the wall clock ticking rhythmically. I don't have a voice. Uh, hello? The girl stucks the fork in her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly while chewing. This is a bit awkward. Um, hello. I was told to pick up some supplies from here. For some festival stalls, I think. I didn't think there would be any someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here too. She picks up another forkful. Doesn't that mean you're here then? She raises her eyebrows as if she expected my observation was false. You're pretty observant. I guess it does. But who are you? This girl seems pretty straightforward, isn't it? I'm Nakai. Nisao, uh, Hisao Nakai. I just transferred on, in on Monday. I'm Rin. Tezuke Rin. Rin Tezuke. Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are now. That's very nice. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. Kinda bothers me. Joking about these matters don't feel doesn't feel appropriate at all. 
I'm trying to figure out what's appropriate and whether this call is. She seems to hold, have little, lost interest in me and is now gazing yearningly back at our food. Can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind, I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are in the back. Go right ahead, but lunch? School's already over for the day. What wood would you use then? There is no wood for a meal you'd after lunch, but before dinner, right? It bothers me very much too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you're supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. But I'm hungry now, and a delicious box lunch would go to waste otherwise. I have curry. It's very delicious. With such a decisiveness, Rin is, uh, once again picks up the fork between her toes, and with at least as much impoliteness, she points it straight at me. So, Nakai, what brings you to this place? Like I said, I was told to look for these things. No, the school. From outside, you look fine. Is your problem inside? Came to a full stop, opening my mouth but not getting a word out. I... I can guess. I am good at guessing. Better than most people. Rain cuts me off before I can answer a question. Or skirt around it somehow. I don't know what I would have done. If I was in front of this issue again, I haven't even told anyone here about my condition. Or maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. Do you get the feeling that not making issue that this is a part of the social code here, as the teacher said? I wonder if the people here could relate. Probably not any better than any normal person could. Can't relate to Shizune's circumstances or Lily's either. Naturally, when I go through this in my head, Rin keeps considering what my condition could be, with an overtly contemplated look on her face. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer was written up there. Beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I don't think it's anything in your head. Something in your guts would be boringly ordinary, like this lunch of mine, and less delicious. The problem must be in your pants. And this messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of a statement and the sheer lack of tack it took was delivered with cast. With catches me completely off guard. I think I might have reeled her back even physically as Rin's eyes widen in revelation, revelation and astonishment. So I was right. There's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? So practically in shock, but recognizing the need to reply something, I spit out the first thing I could think of. No, nothing like that. I have a heart problem. Arithmia. I said it. More like blooded it out, but I said it. <laughs> the girls in front of me poses her lips together and glows up and glows at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in pants would have been much more scandal. <laughs> I'm sure it would have read, yes. It would have been much more scandalous. What's with this reaction? I'm sorry I let you down with my non pants problems. I forgive you. I just collect people and a person with you, you know? That kind of problem. Would have been really great. Collect people? People with different problems. Huh, so you just, like, go around asking people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. There's little left to say. Rin resumes her lunch and the conversation dies away. But I keep thinking about what she said. It's the first time I told anyone else about my condition. Other people have either known about it already or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it like every other student here so far. Should I have told it as a natural part of introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Hassel. I have a very serious heart condition. Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would find us. What a disgusting thought. Maybe this Tezuka girl just has an unnatural interest in such things. They walk to the back of the room to pick up the items on Misha's list. A chance opens to steady Rin from the corner of my eye. Her hair is burnt a, a barn, almost orange and cropped short. Long hair would probably be impossible with no arms. The boy's uniform and the lack of arms make her look very thin, almost scrawny. She's not particularly pretty except for her murky green eyes, which flicker relentlessly from below her short bangs, even when she eats. The distance and the shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, but instead absorb all of it within them like deep wells. She moves her feet almost as deftly as a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see 
see this how this sight could discomfort people, especially while eating. Makes me feel a bit uncomfortable at least. Yeah. I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? I keep searching the cabinets and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time, pa passing the silent grow, it's too uncomfortable. Let's try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So, do you always eat alone and this late? Or do you get the occasional visitor? Visitors? Maybe you are my first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat with a certain person on the roof if she's not horsing around. Horsing? She likes to do sports. And me? Oh. And that's all I can think of to say. Both of us fall silent again as Rin forks the last bits of a meal to our mouth. I look down at my hall and double check it with Misha's list. Seems I have everything except plywood. Um, so I think I have all the things now. That's very nice for you. Don't feel obligated to stay. I was about to take a nap anyway. You need to do whatever you are going to do with the stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you like to watch girls sleeping. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of this, but Vin looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. I'll, I'll catch you later, Tezuka. You can call me Vin. I feel that our relationship is, at this point, good enough to warrant this much. I was already turning to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine, then I'm Hisao. Then you are. Rin looks at me hard in the eyes, but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's not actually looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, and I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped between us out of nowhere. See you later, Hassel. There's something like a tiny smile there in her face. Maybe. I quietly back out of the room as I shut the door in front of me. Remember my face. I whispered to myself, What an intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled singing voice. I heard that. <laughs> I'm sorry, guinea pigs. I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow she had gotten into jumping distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. <laughs> Proof reminds me of Kenji's nerdy theory about a global feminist conspiracy. Barely pushed that to the side. Shizune, standing silently behind Misha, looks aloof as she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention. But Misha is visibly excited. No, wait, more importantly, who's in there? There's no club meetings today. I feel like I'm mixing up voices. She tries to uh, curiously peek past me, even though the door is preventing her from seeing it anyway. What are you doing here? You took so long that we had to come check what's wrong. That's no good, Hee-chan. She wags her fingers at me scoldingly. I found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you are tardy. Oh, sorry. Uh, I got the things here. Was just going to bring them. I think you're up to some mischief, Hee-chan. Who was uh, in there with you, I wonder? Misha says something quickly to Shizune, pointing at her own ear a couple of times. Shizune immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door in the classroom I just left. I can only imagine the shock she is experiencing. With Shizune's dil uh, diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. And indeed, she stares at Rin frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders. From surpassing rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, Shizune just takes a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, turning and to sign fiercely at Misha. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. With that noise, uh, yeah. She shoots a very loaded stare at me too, as if it was somehow my fault that Rin is sleeping on one of the tables. Oh, she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason for my tardiness. Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door, and it takes a few eye blinks to realize she might have trouble opening it. I open the door to find Rin directly behind it, looking at us half-interested, half-sleepy-faced. Hello. Miss Suzuka, what do you think you're doing? You absolutely are not permitted to use school property for such a uh, disgrace. 
Oh, activity! It sure is suddenly very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. At any rate, she ignores Shizune Misha's scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizune taps Misha's shoulders, pointing at Rin, and makes some quick signs. Popularity aside, please don't do that anymore. Anyway, how's your project going? Will it be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under the pressure Shizune's cold stare is putting on her. I keep wondering about that, my, that myself, too. And? We'll think about it harder. As Misha signs her response to Shizune, her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. Miss Suzuka, please try to take this seriously. It'd be a disaster if the wall looks like someone threw up on the lunch on to it. Ren nods assertively. We'll think more seriously. Misha actually giggles that bad, but Miss Shizune doesn't. Not even after translation. She uh, just shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off with Misha in tow. Rin frowns thoughtfully as she looks like uh, she looks after the retreating students' council duo. How rude. It's true, though. I must finish my project f before the weekend. There will be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like weekends usually are, but more dire. Much more dire. Maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. I am about to ask what project she has and what are these apocalyptic consequences, but she walks back into the classroom. Since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? This paint can can doesn't fit into my bag, but I need it. She kicks lightly at a huge can of paint that's lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on. It lets out a dull clank. Being the gentleman I am, I naturally pick it up. <laughs> Heavy. Yeah, sure, where do you need to take it? Away. And with that, she takes off the hallway and the paint can follow since there's little choice for either of us. The hallway is quiet now with the Shizune and Misha gone, so we two leave towards the stairway at the other end. Every 5 or 15 or 20 steps I have to change the can from one hand to another because a thin handle cuts into my palm. At least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. Rin strolls on beside me with an uneven pace that I have trouble matching. Maybe I'm uh, walking weird because of the extra weight. Seems that one of us is constantly walking too slow or too fast, and I can't figure out which. Two flights of stairs below, Trouble appears in the form of the head nurse and his fox-like grin. Ah, Mr. Uh, Nakai, what a happy coincidence. Tezuka, too, of course. He nods courteously to Rin, who does not acknowledge him back, then turns to me because obviously it's me who has, he has some business with. There was something I forgot to mention on Monday. I nod and wait impassively because I can't even begin to guess what he forgot. The feeling of the handle delving deeper into my skin doesn't make me feel enthusiastic about this interruption either. It's about your medication. Since you haven't been that long on your current medication, there might be some unexpected side effects, which might require adjusting dosages or even changing to another kind of medication. So we'll do a few tests regularly, but what I want from you is to keep an eye on everything in condition that feels off, if you get what I mean. Nausea, headache, anything. And come see me if something happens. Alright. So, how are you? Everything fine? I give up and drop the can to the floor before answering him. Apparently this takes longer than my biceps can handle. I had to say something generic as an answer, but then I realized how often I've done that lately. Other people have asked me that too. Teachers and students here, my parents, visitors, nurses, doctors at the hospital. Everyone seems to be concerned about that. It's natural for a hospital, but not so much for a school. Except this school. This is a small school, but both student base and the faculty seems to be very tightly knit. And at least that's from there I'm getting. This is not the kind of school that gets chance for students too often. Thought sends shivers up my spine, but I give a generic answer anyways. That's great. Also, one other thing. My source tells me that you've been at neither the school track or even the pool. So I'd like to know if you've taken up exercising as I asked. Of course I haven't, but his way of... And quoting gives me the feeling that I should have been running my ass off on track since the very first day. You have people spying on me? Not as such. I just happen to know a few people. But that's not the issue here, so don't try to slip out of it. Well, I was actually just doing some improvised weightlifting as an exercise. I pick up and lift the can up and down a few times like some sad imitation of a bodybuilder, even though it's weighing down on my arms painfully. Stupid grin disappears from his face for a second, then he comes back like I was never gone. Tezuka, would you give us a second? The nurse grabs me by his shoulder without waiting for his permission, which he didn't need in the first place, and drags me aside. 
When I told you extra, when I told you to exercise, I wasn't joking. I understand that you're still on your first week and all, but please don't ignore the importance of this. The reason I'm coming down this hard on you is that your is that habits are not easy to form. The more you slip and postpone, the harder it'll be. Same with everything, like dieting. Can you promise you'll be more serious from this from now on? Maybe. Maybe no. I mean, he gives a nasty sort of look when I say that, making me try to take back the ward. I mean, I don't know. I'm still trying to get used to the school. Promise to try, though. You're not being very convincing there, Hisao. Tip number one. Medical professionals are not amused if you take their advice lightly. What's wrong with him? As if a day or two wouldn't make that much of a difference. Didn't do anything at the hospital, either. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Sells me for a moment and then shrugs, smiling again. Okay, that's more like it. If you go to the school track for the uh, track tomorrow morning, you'll meet my spy, who probably has no qualms offering consolation to you if you want to jog a bit. Consolation? Cons uh, f -f See you around. He leaves with a wave of his hand and no answer. I locked up in, who has been waiting idly, leaning against the hallway wall and staring at the pall light fixtures of the ceiling. When I approach, he doesn't move her eyes off them. Are you getting medications for your heart thingy? Were well, you listening? Came out more accusatory than I intended, accidentally lashing out on her. But even so, I don't really want to talk about it. I just met her. I don't know her. It's not my, her business. The nurse seems to be happily ignorant about confidentiality, too. I'm talking about that kind of thing in public. But it's not Rin's fault, is it? Look at her, suddenly feeling a bit guilty. But Rin is just staring past my shoulder quizzically, her head tilted like a bird's. I don't know why this is so hard for me. Feels like there's some inexplicable lock that's preventing me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, that for my heart. Will they make you better? No, not really. They just make me a little less worse. Rin keeps looking at me for a while longer and she neither says anything further, nor displays any kind of emotion I could I disown. Thankful she, that she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all this. The hospital is easy, but I still haven't sorted my feelings about having to live a normal life with the disability. And I'm going to leave it here because I feel like this is a new scene and I need to... Yeah. That's all for this time. This is Resign the Drug Gamer. Thank you for what, uh, enjoying the series so far. Well, I hope you enjoyed the series so far and hope to see all you guys again next time. See you guys then.